Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the Creating Safe, Profitable Small Dollar Loans web seminar co-hosted by the Illinois Asset Building Group, IBG, the Sergeant Shriver National Center on Poverty Law, and the Chicago Appleseed Fund for Justice. Um, Apple G, <laughs> IABG is a nationwide, uh, statewide coalition committed to increasing access to the tools people need to build financially secure futures for themselves and their families. We hope by the end of uh, this hour, everyone attending this webinar will see, as we do, that access to financial tools such as the small dollar loan is important for our communities. Uh, we hope you come, uh, that you come away from this web seminar with a working understanding of our profitability calculator, that you feel comfortable with how it works, the underlying principles of its calculations, and um, for, especially for financial institutions, we hope that you find it useful in creating a small dollar loan product in your own community. For community leaders, we hope they'll be more comfortable reaching out to your community uh, banks and credit unions. So to take care of housekeeping matters at the start, I would just like to let all of you know that everyone except for our current presenters will be placed on mute and um, to give you all clear audio today. Um, if in case uh, you accidentally become unmuted, um, if you become unmuted, uh, make sure that uh, you do not place uh, this phone call on hold as that um, holding sound uh, can be bothersome to some people. Um, you can use the chat tool at the bottom of your GoToWebinar menu to ask uh, me questions as we go through the webinar. Uh, just make sure that you select um, organizer at the bottom of, as a classification for audience members and uh, ask your question. You can also use the chat feature if you have any problems or difficulties with the platform, you can't hear the presenters or see the presentations, and please message me and I will try and troubleshoot the problem. Um, I'll do my best to answer your questions as they come in. Uh, but uh, you should be, you know, feel free to ask questions throughout the entire webinar because I'll be writing them down and we'll be addressing them at the end. Um, at various points, you may see a poll question take over your screen. Uh, please answer these quickly so we can gather your responses and use them to help steer the web seminar to include information most relevant to all of you. To intercept what is a usually popular question ahead of time, uh, we will be posting a video recording of today's webinar on the IBG website and you will receive a post-webinar email roughly about 24 hours after it uh, with the web address to go to. So to give you a brief outline of the agenda today, uh, there will be three presenters. I am Ethan Brown, a program associate at IBG and Heartland Alliance, and I'll be facilitating this web seminar. So I apologize ahead of time if you hear too much of me and not enough of the actual presenters. Uh, next is Cassandra Slade. Um, Senior Vice President of Community Development at Wintrust Financial, and she'll be speaking on their experiences in offering a small dollar loan product at their Lake Forest, Illinois location. Uh, lastly, Katie Welter, the Law and Policy Analyst at Chicago Appleseed Fund for Justice will, and the creator of the Profitability Calculator and lead author of the Alternative Small Dollar Loan Toolkit, or ASDL Toolkit, uh, we, she will walk all of us through the Profitability Calculator today. So IABG has created the ASDL Toolkit and Profitability Calculator because we know, as many of you do, that access to safe small dollar loans is critically important to all of our communities, and especially those of low and moderate income status. The reason is very simple, that without access to safe small dollar loans issued by local banks and credit unions, residents will utilize the often only other available means for quick access to uh, small dollar amounts, which are payday and auto title loans. These loans charge extremely high APR and often have a payback system designed to increase the likelihood of needing another loan to pay back the first, which is a process called churning. Having access to safe small dollar loans designed to meet immediate need for quick cash without creating further financial hardship is not only good for residents of your communities, but your communities as well and the financial institutions that rely on them. We have created the Profitability Calculator uh, to show how realistic it is for financial institutions to design a small dollar loan that is both financially safe for the consumer and yet sustainable as a key component of their lending portfolio. Now, to begin the creating, creating Safe Small Dollar Loans web seminar, I'd like to introduce Cassandra Slade. Cassandra, um, will speak on the experiences that a local bank has had with offering a small dollar loan product. Now, each 
institution and their community are different. So we cannot say that uh, they're that her and uh, Wintrust Financial and Lake Forest Bank Illinois locations experiences have been the same. But um, we feel that the lessons that they learned have been valuable. So um, thank you Cassandra and I'm going to be switching over the presentation to her shortly and um, hope that you uh, everyone uh, learns a lot from the experiences that they have found. see my screen. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Cassandra Slade and as Ethan had uh, discussed, uh, introduced earlier, I'm a Senior Vice President for Community Development at Wintrust Financial Corporation based here in Illinois. And we're a holding company with 15 charter uh, banks that are a part of our um, organization that are in various communities throughout Chicagoland and in Wisconsin as well. Uh, we started in offering the small dollar loan product in the Lake Forest uh, Bank and Trust location, specifically out of the North Chicago um, branch. And I'll just kind of go through a little bit of the history here in uh, the presentation and again open to any questions or um, need for clarification going forward. But when we started the Everyday Small Dollar Loan, we found it we started to be an alternative to payday lending, and we wanted to have a true focus on low and moderate income people and be part of our CRA plan, um, our own internal CRA toolkit, as you will, to meet the needs of low and moderate income people. As again, just a little repetition, Lake Forest Bank and Trust is a wind trust community bank. It was uh, since its inception in 1991. The bank is now at two and a, a little bit, a little over two and a half billion in assets. And uh, the CRE exam that was completed in 2009, the bank had received a satisfactory, and in um, offering the small dollar loan product after two years, as well as other initiatives. Uh, the CR exam rating in 2011 was um, outstanding. The Everyday Small Dollar Loan, again, uh, in 2008, the uh, Lake Forest Bank and Trust opened a branch in a moderate income neighborhood, the North Chicago Community Bank, and it happened to be directly across the street from a predatory lender. So um, as you can see, the, the red line to the, at the top of your screen is uh, Lake County, and, um, and then the assessment area for the bank goes down. That, that blue line to the west there is Highway 45, and it goes into Cook County, um, down ar around Dundee, and so forth. So, and into the lake. So that's the bank's assessment area. The, um, with a, a significant portion of low and moderate income geographies as well in the assessment area as well as people. And when we saw consumers, potential customers at the North Chicago location going to across the street to the payday lender, the bank staff kind of thought, well, this is uh, the, the exact customer that the branch was put here for and what kinds of um, product mix then could we consider to have more of the consumers going to the bank's doors as opposed to the payday lender doors across the street. So that is uh, the thought that gave birth to the bank's small dollar loan program in 2008. So the product that was developed uh, was priced at prime plus five and there was a lot of conversation uh, related to that in terms of higher interest rate. And what was determined is that um, the bank, it, this was in line with the banks in general, consumer lending um, products, car loans, and um, other consumer lending products. And so it was thought to just keep it as competitive to uh, the bank's other products as possible in terms of pricing. Uh, the dollar amount originally was up to $1,000 and um, has been subsequently been increased to $2,500 um, given some experience that we've had with those um, with the thousand dollar limit just being a little shy sometimes of what the need was for the customer and the payment is a minimum of $25 a month the term is up to 24 months 
that they can pay the loan in. And the BTI, their uh, ratio is 50%. And the credit, um, in terms of getting the loan, there's no credit score uh, required. There is the ability to demonstrate um, repayment of the loan, They're, to demonstrate the ability for them, the consumer to repay the loan. So through, um, and this was through uh, the loan loss through November of 2011, we've updated uh, at the time. It's very similar numbers uh, where we had done 407 loans, uh, $446,466. The average loan, again, the 1100 which was uh, over the 1000 which is why the bank made the decision to increase to the, up to 2500 and then the loss rate is 7.875, and that's run pretty consistently. It's never been in the double digits in terms of um, over 10. It, it kind of fluctuates between 6 and 8 uh, percent in terms of a loss rate. Um, and one of the things that upper management had been just uh, kind of really concerned about going out the gate with this is that uh, there would be just 50 percent loss on this loan product, and that every loan that would come in, um, you'd lose one, and you know the thought was no, that would not be a successful program and a, and a product to offer. It was very important that this loan be underwritten with credit guidelines. It's kind of the old-fashioned thought to underwriting as opposed to just relying on a credit score, but that these loans would be used to not only help the consumer meet those um, immediate needs, but also set them up for success in the future, so that if they have um, other needs going forward, that they be developing a positive credit history and uh, be able to access credit again at the bank or uh, some other um, traditional financial source. So uh, year over year since we've been offering the small dollar loan product, we have um, uh, offered Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so we've offered um, this product since late 2008 and uh, full-fledged in 2009 where we had 78 uh, approved. So we, the application amount volume was much higher, uh, but we had uh, 78 loans approved. And then we had um, 190 um, loans in, in 2010 and 135 in 2011. It seems like I'm missing my 2012 data. Um, on this uh, slide for uh, this particular loan product here, uh, but it's we're closing out uh, at uh, we, the highest volume. I will note was the 2010 at 190. We keep thinking we're going to hit the 200 in an annual basis, and that hasn't happened as of yet. But still, very strong numbers in this loan product. So year over year by dollar amount, um, the first year $8,000 in, in terms of um, the loan, very low origination, um, up to as high as the $203,000, and um, with 2011 closing out at 165232 loans. A dollar, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, small dollar loans by dollar amount, this chart is. One of the things that um, we kind of done in a general basis is document our lessons learned and our best practices uh, for the small dollar loan product. Again, I had referenced earlier removing the credit score requirement. Um, we found that people were applying, and it, it was in some instances individuals who had blemished credit and had scores that were um, tending towards the, the lower end, but then we also had it negatively impacting individuals with no credit. And so people just who wanted to have a, uh, access to a small amount of capital and get started in the credit um, stream, that this uh, requirement was also limiting them as well. So we removed the credit score requirement, they have not experienced any additional loss as a uh, as it relates to that, so uh, we're very confident that that was a, a good decision and a positive move for offering the small dollar loan product. Um, when we are able to have payroll deduction, that that has really worked well for payment. We have partnered with some larger employers, including a municipal uh, government of, of actually where um, 
the branch is located, and so if the loan can come in and it's possible through payroll deduction, of course, that uh, has very has very much work well. We do invite the uh, customer to open an account at the bank. It's not required, so they can can or cannot, and uh, payment can or cannot come out of that account. So um, it, it just you know kind of goes smoothly if it comes out of payroll. But if they want an open account and they want to do a deduction out of that on a monthly basis, that's fine as well. We do, we have seen a growth in a customer base, and we feel that people are of the thought that if we've given them a chance with extending a small dollar loan to them for their immediate needs, then they're um, more than, than willing to open an account and become part of our customer base. Um, mentioned about the account at the bank. We did train personal bankers to take loan applications. When the loan first rolled out, um, it was going into uh, the branch and then the file would be transferred to kind of the central office or main bank and the underwriting decision made and, go, and then the decision would be translated back to the customer in the branch and so forth. So we were, we're not, we weren't as um, you know, keeping up to that next bullet, we're just making loan decisions within 24 hours. And that was very critical because we knew people could go across the street and um, access the, uh, access funds through the payday lender, which is kind of what we wanted to counteract. So we trained our personal bankers to just come in, went through consumer lending training, and then that way um, when consumers came to the, the banks, they were able to make decisions on the spot, and that's again, really was a great enhancement to the program. And then we found that frequent marketing and minority-focused uh, publications really worked well. I know some communities may or may not have access to that. It just so happened that where this product was launched, there were two very strong locally uh, owned minority publications. Uh, one is a biweekly and one is a monthly. And we have continued since um, beginning to offer this program in 2008, every issue um, promoting the, the small dollar loan product. And we find that that has been the number one uh, referrer of individuals to the bank to apply for the product. So if you are um, a financial institution, certainly connect with uh, to, and do the research to see if there's an opportunity to connect with a local publication because that has really just been a tremendous boon to, to the program as well. Um, we added it as a permanent product. Uh, there, there was some initial thought if this product would be kind of a temporarily offered piece. It just, uh, you know, we do so many a year, 50 loans a year, and that would be, um, you know, kind of the limit. And it went so well, and the results were um, just amazing for the bank internally that it, it that discussion went away early on. And it has birthed other products that uh, specifically reached this low and moderate income market for the bank, and that has been a, a build your credit type product that's a CD secured loan. Also the addition of a home improvement unsecured product. We ended up having a lot of homes that were in the lower income areas that were challenged with their appraisal, so would not have been eligible for secured home improvement uh, products. So an unsecured product was developed. And then also um, a community mortgage program for first time home buyers. So that was kind of sight unseen. We didn't know that that would happen, but offering the one product did lead to determining that there were needs for other products, and those were developed. And then it gives us opportunities to refinance other debt after the borrower completes the application and lists out their existing liabilities. Then the banker is able to look and offer opportunities or free assessment of those uh, loan, current loans that they have and see if there's better terms that the bank can offer. Uh, in May 2010, the bank uh, was able to participate in the state of Illinois' uh, small dollar loan program, renewed it in 2011. It's a, a great product that the state of Illinois had uh, developed to encourage financial institutions to offer small dollar loan products. Uh, one of the things that we've also found that has been a best practice for this particular product is to maintain an active internal CRA committee. Um, you may have uh, a financial institution may have their own monthly meeting, you know, with another name or what have you. But uh, if there's some group that's looking at this performance on a regular basis, that's helpful. That's how we were able to determine earlier that we had many loans that were being denied due to the credit 
score, and that was how we were able to kind of get in quickly and change that around and, and keep moving forward. And then we continue every month to monitor the performance of that small dollar loan product. Are the applications up? Are they down? Are the losses up and down? And what have you. Just keeps it a, a very fluid discussion and conversation and, and able to act uh, immediately if needed. We have done table days at employers uh, and connected with HR reps who have told us that they are very happy to partner with us because they are the ones who receive the garnishments for their um, employees. If they've had a payday loan that's gone bad, then they see so many people um, kind of really having their, their actual basic pay at risk. And so they're happy to kind of transition um, their employees who might have a need for a short-term loan to uh, kind of a mainstream financial institution. And we have done financial education with nonprofit partners. In this particular instance, it was a women's transitional housing facility. And we kind of did some creative things with the loan for the residents that were in that facility to help them, again, regain and um, their kind of their credit history as they were coming out of some challenged relationships and starting again. One of the things that we certainly um, have found to be helpful as well is offering a totally free checking account that is available so then if um, individuals come in and that they, they may not be thinking or they may be thinking about opening an account, the fact that it's free, no frills, is uh, a great kind of um, offer to, to provide for them, as well as an affordable savings account. So some individuals, if they perhaps have a primary checking somewhere else, they might want to start a savings account, and either one is a good uh, uh, way to connect with, with this market. And uh, that's the end of the this show uh, here and, and my presentation and I'll uh, just be on for questions later on in the in the uh, call. Thank you. Thanks Cassandra. Um, well that was uh, pretty enlightening. Um, so uh, Thank you for giving that first-hand account for, of a financial institution's experiences with offering a small dollar loan product. Um, next, you're going to be hearing from uh, Kitty Welter of Appleseed. Um, I'm going to be changing um, the controls over the TKD Welter shortly. Um, Katie Welter has done a lot of uh, work in addressing the sustainability of a safe small dollar loan. Uh, she was the lead author in our alternative small dollar loan toolkit and the profitability and created the profitability calculator, which she will walk us all through today. Uh, here's Katie Walter. Hi everyone. Uh, before I. Uh get started here going through the profitability calculator. I just want to show you how you can find it yourself. Um, actually, I need just one moment. Sorry about that technical difficulty. Um, so if you want to go to your own computers or now or later, um, you can just go to IllinoisAssetBuilding.org um, and then to Resources, then to the Alternative Small Dollar Loan Toolkit. Click here for the Check Out Our Online Toolkit. And then I'm going to, there are a number of things you can check out later. Um, but what I'm going to be going through today is this create a safe small dollar loan page. Um. So um, while everyone is uh, looking through um, the safe small dollar loan page, I'm going to be uh, presenting everyone with a poll. And please uh, answer this poll quickly uh, so we can show the results and uh, see how uh, everyone's been thinking about small dollar loans.
Okay, so it looks like um, quite a bit of the uh, everyone who's been attending today, uh, over 75% or so have been had voted, and looks like majority had uh, well, majority of those who had, uh, answered uh, have been looking in a small dollar loan. So that's a pretty good sign. Great. Um, so before I begin going through the calculator here, um, I just want to say that there's more than one way to assess the profitability of a loan portfolio, and this is just one model, and it's designed with a generic financial institution in mind. Um, you know your institution best if, if you're coming here from an institution, um, and you can use this tool as a starting point for understanding how a small dollar loan will impact your bottom line. Um, the calculator can be useful for those of you who are thinking about starting a small dollar loan program, which it sounds like many of you are, and it can also be used to evaluate an existing program. Um, if you're thinking about starting a small dollar loan program, you can use this tool to make estimates and projections. Um, and to fill in some of the blanks, you can draw information um, from a similar type of loan, which is an unsecured credit loan. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good guideline. In general, um, I'll, as I go through, I'll, I'll draw some comparisons to those those guidelines, but if you don't have a small dollar loan program, that, that can be pretty close. Um, if you already have a small dollar loan portfolio and you want to use this tool to evaluate the profitability of it, uh, be sure to enter information for one full year or increments of full years. Um, I stress that because underneath this pretty website is just an Excel spreadsheet and it calculates based on the assumption that you're using um, full years worth of worth of loan information. Um, as you look at the page here, um, you can see that there are gray numbers in each of the, each of the boxes. And those gray numbers um, are basically a sample loan that we created. Um, the sample loan shows terms for a pilot small dollar loan portfolio that is, we would consider to be both responsible and profitable. Uh, so while this, this sample portfolio can guide your estimates, you should definitely enter your own institution's data to try to get the most accurate analysis. Um, so I'm going to walk through each of the inputs. And um, if anything is unclear, uh, please put your question in the chat box um, if, if you're listening to this live. And if you're not, please email Ethan at at IEBG because we will answer your question and it will be included in an FAQ later, which will be really useful for people who visit the website. Um, okay, I'm going to get started. As, as I go through each input, I'm going to hold the mouse over this little question mark, which shows the definition of each term, um, and you can do the same. So start, average principal loan amount. Um, this is just the average size of the, of the loan that you plan to make. Uh, for the sample, we picked $5,000 because this is a typical payday loan amount. Um, it's about the size loan that many of your potential customers may be used to borrowing and might be attracted to if you offer that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that in. Okay. Next is the total number of loans. Um, so this, this is just the number of loans issued during the analysis period. And again, that should be a, in terms of full years. We're just going to look at one year. For today, we're going to say 100 loans. So it's just a good sample pilot program, um, 100 loans. As Cassandra was saying, they used to do about 50 a year. It's a good, good starting point. Um, so next is losses per loan. And that can be actual or projected, but it basically it represents the amount of money that you expect, on average, will not be repaid. Um, now, if you're already operating a program, you can use actual losses for that calendar year we talked about. Just take the total losses and divide by the number of loans issued during the period. But if you're just still thinking about starting a small dollar loan program, you'll need to estimate this amount. Um, to do that, you can use the loan loss reserves figure that you'll find on your financial statements. Um, I would recommend using your unsecured credit loan loss reserves in your own institution. Um, that figure tends to be conservative, meaning it's a little bit higher than prior actual losses, and so that, that I think, is a good way to go, to always be conservative. Um, but you should know that small dollar loans do tend to have fairly high loan losses. Um, it's important to be realistic about that, because 
you're trying to understand your portfolio here um, or what a potential one might look like. So for our sample, I'm going to project an average loss of $25 per loan, which amounts to about 5% of the original loan amount. Um, you might notice that, that that's actually um, a little bit lower than, than what Cassandra reported for Wintrust, but we're also talking about um, a sh we'll be using a shorter term. So with shorter terms, you'll see uh, a little higher payoff rate. Um, so getting to term, small dollar loan, loan terms can have a wide range, um, anywhere from two weeks to a few years. Um, we absolutely recommend a term of at least three months. This is to avoid um, what Ethan was talking about earlier, the churning effect, and that's where borrowers don't have enough time um, to, to get caught up and pay off the loan, and so they have to borrow from somewhere else to pay back this loan. So um, actually, if we, we, we put in a little device in the calculator so that if you put a term of less than three months, you'll actually get a little warning sign. So um, I'm going to put in nine months for today's example. So for the interest rate, um, interest rates tend to be pretty high for small dollar loans, usually in the credit card range. Um, I'm going to use 18%. That's pretty typical. It's just a flat interest rate. That's not APR. Um, APR will be calculated below when we're done. You can see how that 18% over nine months turns into APR. Um, cost of funds. So this is just the amount that an institution pays for the money it's lending out. So either it's paying money on deposits, and it uses those deposits to loan them out, or sometimes banks or credit unions borrow money, or they get what's called trust preferred securities. At any rate, you can find this in any financial statements, um, and the line will be called cost of funds. Um, cost of funds right now are historically low. I just checked the Office of the Comptroller of the Currencies website and saw that most institutions are paying between 1% and 2%. So I'm going to go ahead and put 1.5% there. OK, moving along. Delinquency incident rate. So this delinquency incident rate is the percentage of loans that have gone past 60 days past due during the loan life. Um, so one way to figure that out is you can actually look at your own, if you have a portfolio already, you can look at your, your monthly reports, your 60 days past due reports for this loan type, and just add up the number of loans that, that go into that category over the course of the, the period you're examining. Um, the reason we've measured delinquency this way is because we found that often once a loan becomes 60 days past due delinquent with these shorter terms, they typically are either charged off or they, they get caught up and do not become delinquent again. It's so really, talk, I mean, in nine months, um, once you get to the point where it's 60 days past due, you either walk away or, or you, you finish repaying the loan. So, Something to keep in mind, if you're creating a portfolio with a significantly longer term, you might think about calculating this differently or just, just be careful about it. Um, so take the, a delinquency rate of 5%. Um, again, this is, this is based on um, analysis of actual small dollar loan portfolios, uh, but it, it's a little higher than what you might see with an unsecured credit portfolio. Late fee, this is pretty straightforward. So this is just the fee that you charge for late payment. Um, but something to keep in mind with this, this input is if your institution has an internal policy of waiving late fees regularly, you need to take that into account. Um, because, we're, again, we're trying to get the most accurate assessment um, of, your, of the portfolio's profitability. I'm going to put a $10 late fee in there. And the late fee and the delinquency incident rate are actually connected in the spreadsheet. So if you have a really high delinquency rate, you'll have more late fee revenue. Um, personnel expenses per loan. Okay. So this section captures the personnel costs of the loan. Um, this can be kind of a back of the envelope calculation. Just 
think about how many people work on a typical loan. When Cassandra was talking about their loans, you know, there's, there may be a personal banker involved, maybe there, then there's a referral to a loan officer, um, there may be some training. So think about how much time and how many people spend on the loans, and then generally their hourly cost, including salary and benefits. Um, sometimes different loan types take different lengths of time. So if maybe maybe you have a loan where it's a first-time borrower, and you're going to spend a lot more time on that person. Uh, maybe evaluate that type of loan separately. If, if that's going to be if, if a person spends an hour doing credit counseling, for instance the personnel expense is going to be quite a bit higher than someone who has a minimal background check and no credit counseling. Um, so I'm going to put $10 per loan into that box, too. That's probably pr low. That's probably conservative. Um, OK, servicing expenses per loan. This estimate, I, I think of it as kind of a catch-all, actually, but it, it's, it, it includes the amount of money you spend on average to just basically service the loan, to do lo credit checks on loan applicants, um, collection costs for delinquent loans, loan servicing fees. This might be also a place to capture some marketing expenses if you have those, like some of the, um, whatever the advertising fees are that Cassandra's uh, bank pays, for instance. Um, generally, though, on a per loan base, it's pretty low. So I'm going to put $1 for that. Fixed expenses per loan. This one's getting the end here, but this one tends to be the trickiest. Um, so every business has fixed expenses. They're just things like utilities and leases and landscaping and insurance, all these things that you have to pay each month regardless of how much business you do. Um, your financial statements or call reports, they all have line items for these types of expenses, and they might even be called fixed expenses. Um, now. If your small dollar loan program makes up a large part of your institution, you want to allocate those fixed expenses proportionally to that small dollar loan portfolio. Um, in other words, you have to say that the loan, small, to operate the small dollar loan portfolio, you got to keep the lights on, you got to you got to keep the building clean. Um, However, if you're operating or projecting a small, very small pilot program that makes up less than 10% of your overall loan assets, you can pretty much ignore this line or just enter a nominal cost. Um, and this is because you're really not taking up that much of those expenses um, if you're just adding this as something, just a very, very small part of your daily business. Um, since this small dollar loan portfolio we're looking at right now is only worth $50,000, I think it's pretty safe to say that it, it is a small pilot and it amounts to less than 10% of our institution's total assets. So I'm just going to write in a dollar, but I really encourage you if, you, if you get to a point where you have a larger portfolio, to think about those six expenses. Um, our FAQ will also include an illustration of, of how to do this calculation um, using some, some hypothetical numbers. Origination fee, finally, the easiest one, um, I'm, I'm just going to put in $15. It's a pretty typical loan origination fee. Um, so we've entered in all the terms. And just go ahead and hit Calculate. <laughs> and hopefully it'll calculate. <laughs> Oh, there we go. OK, so now you can see the results at the bottom half of the page. And first, there are just some descriptive um, results. It shows the total balance of the portfolio and total losses expected, the terms. And then there are two sections, one for revenue and one for expenses. Um, and you can see these are on a um, per loan basis. And there are also some, some nice statistics here that the bankers and tend to be interested in, things like non-interest income, net interest income, net of charges off there at the bottom, uh, that can be helpful for understanding the profitability of the loan. Finally, at the bottom, we have some, some pretty key information. Consumer cost, um, so $53 is what this consumer is going to be paying for each loan. 
APR to consumer, 25.1%. Uh, it's pretty high. That's inclusive of fees. And um, we're looking at a monthly payment of $59. Pre-tax profit per loan, $13.61. Pre-tax total profit is $1,361.40. So not bad. Um, now I want to real quick show you what happens if we change just one of the inputs, one of the most important inputs, which is the term. So I have here another tab where I've entered six months instead of nine months. And when you scroll down, you can see profitability went from 1361 per loan to 289 per loan. That's a pretty big drop, and that, that's explained up here in the revenue. Um, interest income for the previous, for the nine-month loan was $38, and you can see here it's only $26.58, while the expenses remain pretty much unchanged. And this illustrates a fundamental challenge of small-dollar lending, which is that no matter how short the term, you'll always have certain basic expenses. And in order to be a responsible lender, you can't raise fees and interest rates so much that you can um, offset those costs. And you also, it's hard to collect enough interest in such a short term to offset the expenses as well. So that's what makes this calculator so useful that you can play with those numbers and you can figure out an optimal um, set of fees and interest rates and terms for your institution. Um, when you're finished, you can download your results, put in your information, and click download. And this is what the finished download looks like. Um, it's a really handy sheet to hand to a senior loan officer or the board if you are interested. If you're an advocate, you can give this to other financial institutions and show them what a small dollar loan program would look like for them. I'm going to give it back to Ethan now. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Katie. Uh, that was great. Um, really. Uh Really, really thorough. So um, while I'm still uh, trying to uh, make it so that I can unmute Cassandra right now so that she can actually answer a question, um, I'm going to um, uh, talk about our webinar and what we're going to be doing in the future. Um, we are going to be 
we are going to be offering uh, additional web seminars um, after this one, and please stay tuned for that. I'm going to actually ask a question of Katie right now. Um, Katie, are there um, safeguards to prevent people from developing a predatory loan uh, built into this calculator? Um, the safeguards are that if you input certain terms that result in a predatory loan, you'll get a, a, a warning message. Um, and one reason we didn't make the spreadsheet, the Excel sheet available is to avoid people using it without to create those types of loans and not see the warning message, we want to make sure people realized um, that if you have an APR to consumer over 36%, or if you have a term less than three months, that this is this is not a responsible loan. So that we did consider that, and, and those are the steps we took. Excellent. Uh, well, it looks like the internet is back on. Um, Cassandra, can you? Uh, are you there? I am there, and uh, Ethan, I know you have a question, but I wanted to just kind of clarify something in the presentation. Um, the numbers through the, uh, we update them on a quarterly basis in terms of, of what we release, so just go, so we make sure all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. So through September 30th of 2012, the bank had made 559 loans uh, for $743,000. Dollars, and so we're pretty excited to be pretty close uh, approaching the one million dollar mark in small dollar lending, and um, seeing again a loss rate. I think earlier through 2011 it was uh, almost eight percent, and it's back down. It, of course, it's all a function in terms of volume and payback. But we're right now we're about six point seven percent in loss rate, so about fifty thousand. Um, that has been uh, written off, and something for that that the financial institutions might be interested in is that 94% of these loans are inside the bank's assessment area, so that gives us a really nice strong penetration rate inside our assessment area. 70% 76% are low mod uh, geography, and 88% of the loans to low mod borrowers. So just wanted to give those additional statistics for um, an update. Thanks, Ethan, and I'll take any questions. Excellent. Um, that was great. Uh, great that we could hear the more uh, recent data. So, um, one question we had gotten is: um, so, is the small dial loan program that you offer uh, in the amount that you will annually do? Annually do? Uh, is the, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Sure. Um, is the small dollar loan program that you offer limited in the amount that you will an annually do? Oh, no. Th thank you. No, no. Um, not at, at, in the least. Um, so with the marketing that we do, in addition to the uh, publications, we do direct mails, we do flyers in the branches and point of sale uh, cards and things uh, of that nature. So no, the appetite has been opened. and. Um, I don't want to say insatiable, but it's insatiable as of yet. Uh, again, we're getting close to that $1 million mark, and, and we're excited about that. So that takes more loans to get to that point. So, no. Excellent. Um, well, I uh, just received a, a question from um, one of the audience members. Um, they're wondering if uh, Katie or I uh, can provide more one-on-one -on -one assistance to community organizations uh, hoping to reach out to banks in their community, and uh, we definitely can. Um, we're going to be, uh, you know, if you have any interest in this, and especially if you have a bank or uh, credit union that you think would be uh, ideal for this, uh, whether it's based on geography or the sort of clientele that they uh, typically um, work with, then you know, feel free just to immediately talk to us. Yeah, I would absolutely. And if you have specific questions, I really urge um, about the calculator itself. You will help uh, not only yourself but anyone else by sending those to us so that we can answer them as thoroughly as possible and put them on the web. Okay. Um, so I have another one for Cassandra. Um, uh, an audience member was wondering if a credit score is required for the loans. No, currently there's no credit score uh, required for the loans and that has been just a, a real uh, kind of a different piece because you would think with this type of product you could um, automated and again being a community bank it's worked really well to kind of go back and have a little bit of the old-fashioned underwriting done so that you can see where people may have run into a glitch here or there in their recent credit pass but they have gotten back on track and despite the score you're able to see that from the credit report and be able to 
offer uh, a loan to assist them in their immediate small-term need. Excellent. Um, I guess this, uh, this question almost uh, piggybacks off the one um, uh, that uh, Katie and I had just answered. Um, uh, they're wondering if, uh, if you, Cassandra, had been partnering with any community groups to offer this, uh, this small draw loan product. We have partnered with uh, some community groups. I'd reference one um, group where we went in and, and partnered and provided direct financial education to um, their members and then came up with a creative, um, in, in this case the need wasn't uh, even for the $1,000, it was more maybe $200 or $300 for new tires or for a school fee or what have you. So that has really helped out um, to have community groups have us come in and pair financial education with the loan product and offer that. So, and we're always interested in, in uh, new ways to make that happen. Excellent. Um, I see that uh, Nancy uh, Yule, is that how you pronounce your name? Uh, would you like to uh, ask a question? I have you unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, we can. Okay, great. Sorry, I, I was asking through the chat box, but I don't think it was getting through. So thanks for letting me unmute. So I had a question for Cassandra. Could you talk a little bit about what your underwriting criteria is? Sure. The um, individual has to have been employed um, for a year, and it, it can be in various, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be con in the same job, but it can be, um, you know, three months one place and six months someplace else and that type of thing. So they need to be em employed, um, bring in their two most recent paycheck stubs, um, bring in um, ID, obviously just to you know, make sure it's them. And then we, when we look at the credit, we're looking for the past uh, 90 days in history. And so if there's medical collections or uh, related obligations, those are, are um, really kind of not taken into consideration. Um, and, and just kind of looked for any open collections or recent collection activity or judgments or, or what have you. But if something, you know, is up uh, 24 months or, or more in the past and they've been able to reestablish re credit with a creditor or two in that time period, we take that into consideration. So it's really kind of looking at each file individually, Nancy. It, it's not a checkbox here, check there. It's just kind of if we can see where... Again, if they may have gotten off pat, off uh, base, but then they can show that they've reaffirmed and reestablished, um, that, that really helps us make a decision. So we've seen if you actually purely looked at credit scores on these, you would see anywhere from 450 on up, you know, um, because that, that's just kind of the range that we, we have gotten. But we, we've certainly done, you know, a, a few, not, not a lot of those, probably uh, more in the, in the um, 600 range or so. Sure. And when you look at loan size, do you look at it as a ratio of their income? Well, their ability, yeah, well, it's 50 percent, so we figure in what the loan request is and what that monthly payment would be for that term, and they would have to still be within that, under the 50 percent. Thank you. Excellent. Great question, Nancy. Um, I have a uh, question here from Alex Fenoy. Um, I have you unmuted. Are you there, Alex? Uh, Alex, are you there? Well, it looks like probably um, Alex is probably having difficulties with the uh, the telephone system, which uh, I have had difficulties with before, so I understand his plight. Um, I also see that Sam Hamilton um, might have a question. Are you there? I've unmuted you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I have two questions, actually. I actually typed them in a box. Are you able to see those, too? Uh, for some reason, the uh, the chat box has not been working uh, that well today. And okay. uh, I've had trouble well, seeing question. some of these questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, but my question is for Cassandra. Uh, what do you use to determine the ability to repay? And that's one question. And the second question, what rates... What rate do you charge? Is it tiered based on the amount that they borrowed, or is it a flat rate? Okay. Um, the rate is fixed at prime plus five, and so that's hovered around eight and a quarter for 
the three or four years that the program has been in existence. Um, so it's, it's prime, it's set at, at prime um, plus five, but since that prime rate hasn't changed the rate on the, the small dollar loan. So it's not affected by the amount of the loan. And back to the first question in terms of the ability to pay, kind of one of the things that I mentioned to, to Nancy earlier is, again, that ratio is, is a hard and fast. So if someone comes in and they're 51, um, we, they're denied because uh, the 50 we have found to be very generous um, debt to income ratio and anything over that puts uh, some financial strain on the household and, and we think that we'd be doing um, a disservice uh, to offer that. So that stays firm and looking at any open items on their credit report. So it could be utility loans, I mean, I'm sorry, utility payments, it could be um, it could be uh, some kind of furniture loan or um, some obviously have mortgages on there or what have you, but we're really honing in in their credit pattern for the last 12 months minus any medical related items. Thanks for that question. Um, it looks like we have another one. Um, this may be uh, our last one um, available for our time slot, but uh, Farouk, uh, can, you, uh, can you hear us? Can you say anything? Hello? Hi. Uh, quick question for Cassandra. I guess two questions. I kind of uh, joined a little bit late, and I heard you talking something about payroll deduction. Uh, so if you could just mention in terms of what sort of setup you guys have at the bank. Okay. For payroll deduction, um, I, I mentioned working with um, the municipality. We also work with a um, couple of manufacturing companies and a daycare center. And so we've come up with just a very simple form that uh, everyone has agreed to up front. And it's, uh, when the loan is made, then the, the bar, when the application is made and they're wanting to do the payroll, then that form is signed. And once the loan is approved, then it's um, sent over to the HR area in that employer and added um, for withdrawal from their payroll usually twice a month or, or two times, yeah, that's usually what we found at least. And, uh, and then that goes directly to the bank and it's um, put in a, I mean, there's some mechanics, I don't know, you know, I don't want to get into the, the, too many details, but anyway, it, it goes into an account that pulls out and pays the, the loan when it comes in on a monthly basis. So we figured it out. It was a little onerous to get started with, but um, we've done about three or four employers now and with, with sizable employee base, and so we've kind of gotten it down to a bit of a science. But it, there's a few more, there are a few more steps, but in general that's how it works. Got it. But so this is not your requirement on every loan? This is oh, just... it's not a requirement at all. It's just a convenience. Got you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and my second question is, would it be possible to get a copy of your slides? Absolutely. Um, Ethan, is that going to be part of the what's posted, or is that separate? Um, well, we will have uh, a video recording of uh, everything, uh, including um, her actual presentation, uh, you know, like what she said, uh, the audio portion, uh, in a video uh, that will be launched within a week or so of this webinar. Um, uh, as for the actual presentation slides, uh, we haven't decided that yet, but we'll be sending out an email uh, shortly. Thanks. Um, well, it looks like that's probably it for our question and answer period, um, and probably it for the uh, webinar itself. Uh, I thank you so much for attending this webinar today. I hope each of you learned more about small dollar loans, and hopefully there's some communities out there that are a little bit closer to uh, having access to small dollar loans. Uh, tomorrow you will re be receiving an email thanking you for the webinar and it will also contain a link to an IBG website where a video recording of this uh, webinar will be available sometime the next week. Um, as I said before, this is the start of our 2013 um, uh, webinar series. It's going to be on a lot of different asset building issues, uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And additionally, we would love any feedback on today's webinar, and we would really appreciate it if you could take just a, less than a minute or so to answer a very short survey after that will be popped up immediately after the webinar today to help us make uh, future ones better. So please contact me, uh, Ethan Brown at ebrown at Heartland Alliance, if you might want some one-on-one -on -one assistance in creating a small dollar loan product, or if you might appreciate some help reaching out to local banks or credit unions in your area about offering a small dollar loan. 
I would like to invite everyone to join the IABG Coalition, and if you're interested in having access, every, and if you're interested in everyone having access to the tools needed to be financially secure, coalition members only receive uh, some e-communications uh, about a monthly newsletter and a few emails about learning opportunities like this one, in, in addition to a few other topics. And to join the coalition or learn more about IABG and the issues and policies that we care about, just contact me at ebrown at heartlandalliance.org. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great afternoon.